Hello, God bless you. Welcome to our daily video where we take a daily look at the Bible verse. You know we all get hungry and need to eat and feed our physical bodies, but just as importantly, we need to be feeding our spiritual bodies. We feed our spiritual body by getting along with God, praying, and reading the Bible. You can read a physical copy of the Bible, but if you cannot see to read the Bible, or you do not own a physical book, then you could read the Bible from a free Bible app on your device, from one of the various free Bible websites or download a free Bible program on your computer but it is so very important to read the Bible for yourself to feed your spiritual body this spiritual food will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial tribulation temptation and struggle in these daily videos we give you a verse of the day or an appetizer as I like to call it along with some discussion which I pray will lead you to want to dust off your Bible and read the Bible for yourself. Read the verses before and after. Just finish the chapter and feast on this living word. Like I always say, read the Bible for yourself. Don't take my word or anybody else's. Read the Bible for yourself so you will not be deceived. I am just a person like you are. I am in no way special. I do not have all the answers. No one does. I don't care who they say they are pastor, a teacher, evangelist, prophet, seer, it does not matter. They do not have the answers that you're looking for. Only God does, and you will only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. And with all the misinformation and deception in this end time world, this Bible is the only truth that we have. So let someone else tell you what the truth is. Read the Bible for yourself. Do not rely on someone through TV, radio, internet, or physical church to tell you what is in the Bible. No one can even scratch the surface of what is in the Bible. Hollywood cannot even match the stories in this book. So read and discover the stories for yourself. Today we're looking at a beautiful scripture about God's mercy found in Psalm 36 verse 5. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. If you look at Bible Hub, you see the different translations I'll pretty much agree with how it's written in this verse, some different variant words, but I like how the New Living Translation words this verse. It's different, but it speaks very beautifully. Your unfailing love, O Lord, is as vast as the heavens. Your faithfulness reacheth beyond the clouds. Isn't that beautiful? God's unfailing love is as vast as the heavens, the universe. I just think about it. Think about space. Like from any movie you may have ever watched. Maybe seeing space through at the planetarium. Or looking through a high power telescope. Looking at space through any of the programs like Stellarium. It just keeps going and going. And like the NLT says, God's love, God's mercy is, is vast. We covered the scriptures before in Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed, because his compassion faileth not. It is as vast as space, his compassion fails not. They are new every morning, great is thy faithfulness. His compassion, his mercy are new, renewed every morning. Psalms 30 verse 5 says, For his anger endureth but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night. The joy cometh in the morning. Why? Because as we see in the NLT, God's faithfulness reaches beyond the clouds into space. Isn't that beautiful, y'all? What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I love that the Lord loves us so much that in His love is so unfailing that if we were to measure it, it would be like trying to measure space, which keeps going and going and going. That's how much God loves us. That's how much, you know, when we mess up, his unfailing love. He's not going to say, well, you messed up. Goodbye. Isn't that beautiful? That is so amazing. Now, if you're listening right now, and you don't understand this mercy, this faithfulness, this unfailing love that we're talking about here today, then that's why we share the gospel at the end of each video. Because you may intellectually know who Jesus is. You may know what Jesus did on the cross, but you do not know him personally. You do not take the time to get to know him, to take time to talk to him. We always follow the gospel with a warning about Jesus' intimate return. 
And right now you can personally know Jesus. But one day soon, and how soon we don't know exactly, but one day all those who personally believe in Jesus will be gone. Who personally had that personal relationship with him. And then complete hell on earth will be coming soon. We can see it coming in the world today. The world is getting darker and darker by the day. And the Bible predicted it. And I want you to know Jesus personally before all hell breaks loose. Many have differing opinions about the rapture, but one thing is for sure. We are not guaranteed our next breath. And even if we are here when this hell comes, who knows how long we could survive it. Because one day millions will disappear, along with all the children around the world. And when you hear that those people have vanished, no, no matter what is said, the rapture has indeed taken place. So I'm giving you the gospel right now, while you still have time to turn to Jesus before it's too late. So if you got to this point, and you're still listening, and you don't know Jesus, now I'm not talking about knowing who Jesus is. I'm talking about knowing Jesus being in a relationship with Jesus where whatever sorrow, struggles, burdens, trials, temptations, tribulations come, you know everything is going to be all right. You're going to get through it and you get through it with joy knowing that you're not alone in it. And if you don't know that Jesus, then please let me introduce him to you today. Jesus always existed. Jesus is God. Jesus left eternity. He left his throne in heaven. Jesus became flesh. He was not an angel. He was not a ghost. He was not a prophet. Jesus was flesh and blood and bone, born of a virgin, 100% God and 100% man. He lived a perfect sinless life. Jesus came to the earth just to die for us all. Jesus was crucified on a cross, dying a brutal death was buried in a tomb for three days and three nights, and he rose from the dead, proving that he was God because death in the grave had no power over him. And doubting any of this is taking away who Jesus said he is, and if Jesus isn't who he said he is, then no one is worthy of salvation. Jesus is coming back soon to set up his earthly kingdom. The requirement to enter this kingdom is that we must be absolutely perfect and without sin. This is because God is perfect, God is holy and God cannot dwell with sin. God has a standard of perfection with that standard of perfection. There are rules and because we live in a fallen world we break these rules we sin. Self-righteous people love to use the word sin and sinner as a weapon but in reality the sin means that we break God's rules either thought or action and the Ten Commandments alone show us that we cannot completely keep God's rules. The Bible is clear that no one is without sin. In fact, the Bible says if we say that we're perfect and we don't sin, we are lying to ourselves and we are calling God a liar. Because we all fall short, we all miss the mark, we all sin. Sin creates a separation, a valley between God and man. And with each sin, that valley gets wider and deeper. That sin is there because we live in a fallen world. And because of this separation, there is a punishment for sin that has to be paid. The wages of punishment for sin is death. All of us face eternal judgment and separation from God because we break God's rules. And since no one is righteous, which means no one is perfect, something needs to bridge that valley of sin. And the only way to bridge that valley of sin and to pay the penalty for our sin is by the shedding of blood. In the Old Testament, they would use the blood of animal sacrifice. The animal sacrifice was only strong enough for one sin. Once they would sin, they would have to offer another animal. That animal sacrifice was like bridging that sin valley with a rope bridge. Once they would sin again, they would have to offer another animal because that valley would get wider and deeper and that bridge would snap. But unlike the animal sacrifice, which is only strong enough for one sin, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was powerful enough to pay for all sin, all of my sin, all of your sin. In fact, all the sins of everyone who believed in Jesus in his day, about 2,000 years ago, all the way to today, and all the way to the end of the world. Jesus wants to save us from the penalty of our sins and give us eternal life. When Jesus died on the cross, Jesus took our place, suffered God's wrath for us, 
the punishment that we deserve for our sin was poured out on Jesus. The Bible says that God gave his son to the world to die in our place. Jesus took our sins. Jesus nailed our sins to the cross with him. Jesus shed his precious blood, which covered our sins. Jesus paid God's unpayable price to permanently bridge our valley of sin. When Jesus died on the cross, just like the song says, Jesus paid a debt he did not owe, but we owed a debt to God for our sin that we couldn't even begin to pay. And Jesus knew because of our sin debt that we're guilty, and we're the ones that deserve to die. And though Jesus was innocent of death, Jesus loves us enough that he died for us. And not only did Jesus die for us, but Jesus lives for us. Jesus is in heaven right now interceding for us as our mediator testifying to God that we are his and that our sins are forgiven. This is why Jesus truly is the only way to the Father. He is the only one worthy to pay the price for our sin. Jesus paid our sin debt in full. Our debt had been paid. We're free to go when Jesus died. He redeemed us from the bondage of sin, purchased us with his shed blood on the cross. Redeemed means that Jesus purchased us, bought us back to him. This is why you cannot earn salvation by your own works. Whatever makes you think you're good enough, whatever makes you think you're worthy of heaven, you may be saying you're not perfect, but you never stole anything, you never killed anybody, never done drugs, whatever it may be. If you think you can enter heaven without believing in Jesus, it will fail because the Bible is clear. Jesus is the door to get into heaven. And if you try to enter heaven another way, the Bible calls you a thief and a robber. Now you may be saying God is a loving God and God will not send you to hell. You're right, God is a loving God, but the price to bridge that valley of sin is so high, your works will never pay for the first brick. In fact, you can't even live long enough for your works to pay for the first brick. If you could earn just a little bit of your salvation, Jesus would not have came. Because if you can earn a little bit of your salvation, then you can earn it all. The point is you cannot earn your salvation. You cannot buy your way into heaven. This is why we must receive Jesus into our life as Lord. God knows that we'll never be good enough to earn salvation on our own. That's why Jesus came and died on the cross. Jesus is the only one who lived that perfect sinless life and became the substitute for our sins. And just like your works cannot buy your way into heaven and you cannot earn your way, your salvation is also not based on the salvation of someone else. There is no legacies to get into heaven. Just because mama or grandma was saved, that doesn't mean that you're saved. You must individually accept Jesus' free gift. The Bible says whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. This free gift of eternal life is a life living with God forever. In a world where God will wipe away all tears from our eyes, there will be no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain, no more addiction, no more depression, no more sickness, no more disease, no more suffering, no more feeling alone, no more death. The burdens of this world will be no more. And if you never called on the name of Jesus, don't wait till you get a point in time in your life where you feel ready to come to Jesus, go to church, or read your Bible. Don't wait till you overcome addiction. Don't wait till you're financially secure. Or whatever other excuse you may be telling yourself right now. Go to God right now. Jesus loves you. Jesus will help you through any and everything that you're going through. Please do not think that you're unsavable, unlovable, unworthy, saying the seed will fall down. If you come to Jesus, go to church, or read your Bible, you may have had some self-righteous person in your life tell you that you're a sinner and going to hell. That person is not Jesus, and they do not represent Jesus. Because through our own works, none of us are savable, lovable, and worthy. The Bible says that our righteousness are as filthy rags, which means... Our perfectness in God's eyes are as bloody rags. That is why Jesus came and died for us all. Jesus knows that we're not perfect. So no matter what you may have been done in your past, no matter what you may be doing right now, I believe as long as there is breath in your body, there's a chance. And you have the opportunity today. And if anything I have said sounds like a Jesus you want to get to know, 
then I believe this is God calling out to you right now, today, telling you that you are savable, lovable, worthy. So please do not ignore God's call. Turn to Jesus today. Jesus loves you. Jesus will not condemn you. In fact, Jesus will help you through any and everything you're going through. So don't wait. Go to God now. Today is the day of salvation. And it's so simple. Just admit you're not perfect. Admit you don't have everything figured out. Admit you're a sinner. Admit you can't do this on your own, that you need a Savior. Believe in who Jesus is, that Jesus is the Son of God. Believe that Jesus is Lord. Believe that Jesus died for you, that Jesus paid for the price for your sin on the cross. And Jesus was buried and God raised Jesus from the dead. And now Jesus lives for you. So call out to God today. Confess your sins and repent. Repent means that you turn away from your sins. You have a change of heart, a change of mind. Do a 180, make a U-turn, change your behavior. When you repent, you tell God that you are sorry for breaking his rules. But more than that, it means that you see things as God sees them. And this makes you want to obey God's rules and not do anything wrong again. And you do not need someone telling you your fox, kicking you while you're down. You need someone who's going to pick you up. Just know that you're so loved, you're so special to God. When God formed you with his hands and placed you inside your mother's womb, God created you into the beautiful, unique person that you are. And God has a plan for your life. And like any good parent, God, who is our Heavenly Father, only wants the best for you. So seek him today. Jesus is coming back soon. We can see all the signs that Jesus talked about. War, sicknesses, natural disaster. It's all happening worldwide. And if you doubt that we are in the end times, we have a questionnaire in the description box called Do You Think We're in the End Times? Take the quiz. Feel free to give us your answers in the comments section. I think if you are paying attention to the world around you, you will see that we are truly in the end times. And before you say there has always been war, sicknesses, natural disasters, let me say yes, you are absolutely right. There has. But now, as predicted in the Bible, it's all happening worldwide, and like birth pains, these end-time events are happening more frequently and more intensely. So do not wait. Do not put Jesus off. Go to God now and give your life to Jesus today while you still have the opportunity. We covered in the Gospel that Jesus already paid the price. It's a free ticket waiting for you to enter into heaven, and you have the opportunity today to turn to Jesus before it's too late. This is your wake-up call. Jesus is coming back soon. Bible prophecy is jumping off the page. We do not have time to wait. The Bible is clear that we are not guaranteed tomorrow. There is no guarantee that we'll see the sun rise tomorrow. So tomorrow may be one day too late. So please turn to Jesus today. Well, I pray you got something out of the message today. If you did, give God glory. Remember that I love you and Jesus loves you. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow, God willing, or hopefully... We'll see you in the clouds.